This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Football is right around the corner. Make sure you are ready for your all your barbecue needs this fall. Be sure to go over to the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Oh, wait, the site's currently down. Uh, when it's back up, you better better get right on it and get all those great, great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has, such as the Sonoran Heat, the Smoked, the Two Border, Carry Steak, Four Horsemen, Old Fashioned, the Mad Hatter, and much, much more. Um, just check out those and much, much more once that site is back up over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com and use that promo code SWOOTCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company, Kyle, is a world-class, micro-roasted, hand-roasted, roast-to-order, veteran-owned, fair trade certified USDA organic coffee company. Did I say Ohio-based? They're Ohio-based. Shop local, y'all. Uh, they're out of Toledo, Ohio, which is, uh, well, it's technically Perrysburg, but just outside of Toledo, Ohio. Uh, they have an, a bunch of amazing coffees. Um, it, the, the the funny thing is, Kyle, when you do everything right, when you make sure your ba- your beans are organic and and fair trade certified, and when you make sure that you're roasting them fresh and you make sure that you're roasting them in small batches and you're doing all of these things that are not just... Like they're the right things to do, but it's not just the right thing to do to make sure that you're doing right by your customers and right by the world. But also, by the way, it turns out it makes superior coffee as well. That's just a fun little a fun little aside that it makes the coffee much better. So you can find a bunch of amazing coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Where's it going, YouTube and our fellow Sloop Cats in our Discord? We have a fun one. I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, yeah. News broke loose and let the rumors begin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we're, we're, we've opened the floodgates. The floodgates, Kyle, are open. God, you this wanna, should be fun here. You, you want to give the people a quick preview? Let's just give the YouTube people a quick preview. I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. Oh, this is what we're doing today. That's right. We're talking conference realignment. That's what we're doing today. But not yet. But not yet. We got we to gotta start the episode. Not yet. I have to see that on, I have to see that on <laughs> YouTube because I can't see it. Uh, you you could jump in the Discord and mute yourself and and see see it that way. Hmm, maybe, Teach but I don't want to screw up our recording. Let's yeah. just we'll just go as is. It'll end up causing some sort of weird echo or something. That's probably for the yep. best. Yep. All right. Let's let's get into it. Jess. Yes. Let's. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well here. How are you doing today, Jared? Kyle, the floodgates are open. It's conference realignment time. Let's go. Yes, sir. Let's let's not screw around. I want to talk about conference realignment. We have a thousand questions about conference realignment. We want to talk about conference realignment. Uh, Oklahoma and Texas are seemingly, I feel very sure at this point, that Oklahoma and Texas are in fact going, going to the SEC, which... Might be the biggest move from a like quality standpoint, Texas and Oklahoma, two very big schools. But, oh, if you think it's stopping there, if you think everyone else is going to sit back and watch as the Big 12 falls apart and the SEC gets even stronger, if you think that's what's happening here, you're mistaken. If you think the Big 10 and the ACC are just going to sit around and watch, you're mistaken. So, Kyle, I, I think no screw around time today. Let's let's get straight into the show. Yep, absolutely. SEC, as Jared just said, 
looking to add in Oklahoma to, and Texas to their conference. So that would bring it currently to 16 teams here. But we're going to talk about um, one of the things we did about a month ago, I think. We brought this nice graph of like, Kyle? hey, who's our A tier and who's Kyle? Michigan level? We recorded it a month ago, but if you remember, we just released That's that right. episode last That's week. Right. We did release that last week. Yes. So for everyone <laughs> else on the planet, that was seriously just our last episode. Yes. Well, we're bringing that back again here. All right, we're let's, bringing let's that bring back. It up. Let's so bring it up. we're we're gonna we're gonna figure out which teams make the most sense to go to which conference and which ones are going to end up folding here. <laughs> so yeah, let's just jump straight into that. These teams are folding. Why can't I slide this? What is what is happening? Why am I? Why am I struggling? Um, do 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 do. Okay, we got that. But where's me? Why is this suddenly? There we go. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Kyle, it's time to talk conference realignment. Uh, so if, if you are just listening to this, uh, if you're just listening to the audio only version of this, uh, we're going to we're going to keep Kyle can't see the graphic either. So he's going to really sort of be in charge of making sure you guys know what's happening here. But this episode is going to work way better on YouTube. I just want to give that as a fair warning. This episode is going to work better on YouTube, but we're we're going to keep the audio only folks informed of what is happening as well. So just to keep everyone on the same page, uh, what we have up right now from a visual standpoint are the six major conferences. I have included the American conference in this discussion. Um, mostly, well, well, we'll get into why. I think the American conference plays a big role in this and not just from a, well, maybe, but also maybe not just from a, like their teams are going to get poached standpoint. Although I do think some of their teams are going to get poached. It's going to be very interesting next couple of years. I think this, this, this whole process will probably go on for not just this off season, but also next off season. This will probably be about a two year, two and a half year process. So I'm not saying all of this happens in the next couple months. I'm saying what I'm, I think the time frame we're looking at here is probably like two and a half years. Does that sound about right to you, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds about right here. So first and foremost, Let's go ahead and let's do the thing. Let's move Texas. Let's move Oklahoma over into the SEC. Kyle, it has been rumored that Texas and Oklahoma collectively shopped themselves to the Big Ten, and the Big Ten said, yes, Texas, no, Oklahoma. And the Texas, but Texas and Oklahoma were going to stick together. The SEC said, we don't give a shit about academics. Come on over, Oklahoma. Um, but the Big Ten does. And by the way, you can say, oh, the Big Ten's being snooty. The Big Ten's being pompous. The Big Ten's being this. The Big Ten's being that. Kyle, Kyle I know you know this, but I feel like I'm going to address it to you anyway. Kyle, I'm going to tell it to you again. Or anyone, actually. Football doesn't matter. I'm so I'm, I'm gonna let you sit with that for a second, guys. I'm sorry. I know this is a football podcast and we're all football fans here. But please keep in mind that these are universities that happen to have football programs and not the other way around. Please keep in mind. That. What we're dealing with right now are universities and the Big Ten is not just an athletics conference, it is also a research share, which means exactly what it sounds like. These universities do a ton of research in the medical realms, in the engineering realms. They just name, name a facet of society, energy, engineering, medicine. The Big Ten does research in it, and they share those research findings and methodologies and grants and everything among the schools. The Big Ten made, and these are 2019 numbers because 2020 was weird, and I don't even know if those numbers are public yet. But based on 2019 numbers, the Big Ten made approximately $780 million in athletics in 2019. 
That's a lot of money. Seven hundred and eighty-one million dollars. A lot of money, right, Kyle? It is. Do you know what the Big Ten uh, the excuse me, the Big Ten Research Alliance made? Uh, more than that. Ten b-, b with a B billion dollars. Ten a b- 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 billion dollars. Over ten times what athletics makes. So why doesn't it, it's not by the way, so I'm not trying to be like the Big Ten cares about academics. And I'm not trying to say that as in the Big Ten is better than the other. Co- no, it's that that's where the money's at. Like this isn't a the Big Ten is better than you thing. This is a the Big Ten cares about money thing. And the money mm-hmm. is not in athletics. It is in patents and research grants. Ten billion dollars a year. The Big Ten makes in research money. Football doesn't matter. And it and the fact that they were like, Oklahoma, we don't want you is not a surprise. If you've ever heard me or Kyle talk about uh, uh, conference realignment in the past. We have told you that Oklahoma had little to no chance of ever getting to the Big Ten. Because they're just not at that academic standard. Mm -hmm. And they're not a part of the AAU. Yeah, well, and here, here, here's here's one thing. I'm I'm just going to throw this out because I'm sure we're going to get comments about it. Well, not everyone, not every university in the Big Ten is in the AAU. There's one team Nebraska. that is not. Nebraska was in the AAU when they joined the Big Ten. They have since been removed from the AAU, but at the time they were in the AAU. Which, by the way. Like, it means they're just sub-AAU. AAU is in a very exclusive list of schools. I believe it's 60 schools. It's approximately Mm -hmm. 60 schools. And that includes Harvard and Stanford and a, like, John Hopkins. It's a very exclusive list of schools. And every Big Ten team, every Big Ten school is on the list except for Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Jared, let's let's go into a little bit more here. So Oklahoma and Texas, you moved them over to the SEC here. Yeah. So anybody qu- else, as, as, as you mentioned before, 16, you and I both agree that is not going to be the stopping point for either SEC or the Big Ten. No. Or even the AAC, or AAC excuse me, the ACC. No. Um, going there, too. So I'll, I'll kind of let you lead here, Jared. Yeah. What other team is going to move from their conference to another conference? So I had been uh, whenever people would ask me in the past, who would the Big Ten add next? Who would the Big Ten add next? Two schools I always mentioned because they felt like the net next natural step for the Big Ten. And that would be North Carolina and Virginia. These are two of the absolute best public universities in the country. They're both AAU members. And like, if you look at New Jersey, Maryland, who, what, so we're going down the, down the, down the coast there. Who's next? Virginia. Who's next? North Carolina. They felt like the next, next logical steps. However, whenever I would say that, by the way, Kyle, can you find it? I think Nomad asks a, asks Lucas question in regards to uh, uh, North Carolina and Virginia. Yeah, he he says over under on the Big Ten getting UNC and Virginia at 95%. Under. Here's the problem. Whenever people would ask me that, I was never, never saw all of this happening in the year 2021. The meteorites deal for the AC for the ACC is some ends in something like 2035. I don't believe that right now, during this season of conference realignment. I do not believe that anyone leaves the ACC. I I just I don't see it. Not with the media rights deals going all the way out to 2035. I just I don't see any ACC team leaving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but well, I, I agree. I do see I the ACC and if, it, and if it wasn't and if it wasn't for that, I think I really think the ACC would have been dismantled, kind of like what the Big East did. Pos- a, a while ago. Too. Certainly it was a possibility, but 
one big thing that the ACC has going for it right now is that I do believe we saw Notre Dame be a temporary football member last year during the pandemic. I, I, I think the writing's on the wall. I think Notre Dame becomes a full-time ACC member. They're already an ACC member in basically all of sports except for football. Except uh, hockey, they're a Big Ten member, but every other, every other non-football, not hockey, they're a member of the ACC. They already have the conference uh, scheduling agreement with the ACC. We saw them be a temporary member last year. We are looking at a playoff expansion proposal that Notre Dame helped write. Their active, their athletic director helped write this proposal. That basically makes it an impossibility to be one of the four teams that gets a bye week in the playoff unless you are a conference champion. The writing's on the wall that Notre Dame's joining a conference. That conference will be the ACC. So I think that's the next domino to fall. Notre Dame will become a official full term member of the ACC. All right. So. ACC, we're not touching. Obviously, well, not not not, 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 depart, not for, no, no departures from the ACC. There will be no departures from the SEC. There will be no departures from the Big Ten. There will be no well, departures from let, the ACC. Well, let, let me let me throw this at you because it's been talks. I'm I don't think it's going to happen. Sure, Texas A and M, pissed. Texas A and M, pissed off. They wanted nothing to do with Texas. They are very mm-hmm. angry. They are not pleased. They wanted nothing to do with Texas. And they're supposed to have a scheduled meeting with yep. the conference on Monday afternoon. Yeah, I just, but I don't see them leaving. And, and if they left, if they left, it, I think, I think they're probably already having conversations with the Big Ten. Now, what do those conversations actually mean in the grand scheme of things? Probably nothing. Do I think Texas A and M ends up in the Big Ten? No, I do not. Do I think they end up in the ACC? No, I do not. Um. Yeah, uh, Austin says Texas is now infringing on the Tamu market, adding another land grant. Yeah, Texas A&M would be an amazing fit. They're AAU members, huge alumni base, huge university, great research institution, brand new territory for the Big Ten. Texas A&M would be an enormous win for the Big Ten. Enormous win for the Big Ten. I just don't see it. I just don't see anyone leaving the SEC. I just don't see it. All right, so we're leaving Texas those three A&M's going to throw a temper tantrum. Don't get me wrong. They're going to be pissed. Yeah. They're going to stomp their feet. They're going to yell. They're going to cry, but nothing will change. All right, so we're, we're not touching the ACC, Big Ten, or the SEC. So that kind of leaves of the other two major ones, the Big 12 and the Pac-12. Yeah. So here's what happens. I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I'd, I had said for years that Virginia and North Carolina would be the next steps for the Big Ten. Things have changed. The Pac-12 is a dumpster fire. They have no leadership. They the they they tried doing their own Pac-12 network. They did it two years too late, and it's been a disaster. It's just it's been an outright disaster. The Pac-12 is falling apart, and we have a Nevada nugget out there stating that Oregon and USC have been in contact. And what does contact mean? What does communication mean? In the grand scheme of things, nothing. But there has been communication between USC and Oregon and the Big Ten at the very least. So so looking looking at like the Big Ten, obviously wanting to look at universities that's part of the aau so looking at this list here there's there's definitely some interesting ones that is in this list here of big 12 teams and pac 12 teams i'm just going to name a few of them here yeah iowa state Uh arizona Uh um university of california all of them all of Uh, them (laughs) usc just just in case anyone doesn't know this the university of california incorporates from a football standpoint, we're, we're talking from a football standpoint, that it is both Cal and UCLA. Those are both the University of California. Yep. Uh, USC. 
uh, Oregon. Mm-hmm. I know they're part of the AC. No, yeah, I won't touch the ACC. I was about to say Pittsburgh, uh, Colorado, Stanford, uh, Utah. If I didn't say that already, uh, I think I think that's it there. Oh, if you want to add University of Buffalo in there too. Oh, I, the, yeah. Well, we will be talking about the Buffaloes, but we won't be talking about the University of Buffalo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I, I don't see any Mac schools moving their way into a power five conference. Um, right. So, Kyle, I'm seeing an outright unadulterated. Um, take no prisoners raid. Of the Pac-12 by the Big Ten. I think at the very least, at the very least, it includes. UCLA, Cal, USC, and Oregon. At the very least. So that would bring that would bring up the Big Ten conference up to 18 teams then. Because we, we both agree 16, which is where the SEC would be at right now with yep. Oklahoma and Texas adding in. We both agree that 16 is not going to be the number there. It's going to be more than 16. So the question now is, if we look at the Pac-12, who just had, by the way, let's talk for a second about why those four teams. UCLA and Cal are the two, I believe, the last I looked. I know that the U.S., uh, what is it, the, the U.S. rank, the U.S. news rankings of college. I get that that is flawed and is not the end all be all and that it's more concerned about like money than it is actual like edu- I get that. But we are but using those rankings, we are talking about the number one and number two public universities in the entire country, UCLA and Cal. You're talking about not from a single campus standpoint, but from a university wide standpoint, you're talking about the biggest student base in the entire country across all of the University of California's. They have like six, seven major campuses, something crazy like that. USC and Cal, I believe, are a package deal. I don't think you could steal just one of them. I do think you have to take both of them. But again, we're talking about money, research, academics, out the wazoo. They are the crown jewels of public university academics in the country. So, yes, UCLA and Cal, I think, joined the Big Ten. USC is that cachet. Of course, just for the record, USC is a private university and not involved with the rankings I just said there. And then Oregon, a great football program, up and coming fo- football, football program, AAU member, very good athletics, Nike. Brand new recruiting territory, brand new television territory. You want to talk about the Big Ten. And like, I know a lot of people still mad about Rutgers and, and Maryland, right? But what did Rutgers and Maryland do for the Big Ten? Oh, they suck. Okay, you know what? Maybe. Maybe they suck. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But you know what? Yeah, no. Go, going right where Jared, Jared's saying with that. Bringing in a new audience uh-huh. and even more so for Ohio State fans and the football program, bringing in more recruits from that area too. We were seeing – the population decline in the Midwest with the population decline in the Midwest. We're also seeing recruiting talent decline in the Midwest. So what the big 10 is doing is not just getting TV markets. They are, I'm not saying that's not a big part of it. They are gobbling up TV markets. That is a big play here, but they're also gobbling up recruiting territory grabbing recruiting territory that is of the upper East coast, because now you're, you have territory in Maryland. It's not a coincidence that the, that Ohio state has started recruiting better in Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, New York, New Jersey, since bringing Rutgers in Maryland in the big 10 is no longer the Midwest Conference, the Big Ten is now the Northern Conference. That was always the plan. 
Uh, Nomad the, says it also the, kept Penn State from leaving. And I always feel like that whole Penn State leaving thing was more saber rattling than reality. But yes, I, I do think that you have to remember how far Penn State Penn State's all the way on the east side of Pennsylvania, which is a very big state. And the closest school to that was Columbus. They were pretty far outside of the footprint. Mm -hmm, yeah. And this and if the those teams that you mentioned, UCLA, Cal, USC, and Oregon would join. Yeah. That's pretty much Jim Delaney's vision, his yes. his his goal going Big Ten coast to coast there. And that's exactly what this would be. Yeah. But it's it's owning the entire western coast, especially if, and I think this is a possibility. We include Washington into this conversation. I you think can, we you, should look at the Huskies in... as a very real possibility on top of USC, Cal, UCLA, and Oregon. Because I do think that they end up going to 20 teams. I think those yeah. four are the core teams you steal from the Pac-12. But Stanford, Washington, Colorado, eh, maybe Utah. Maybe not, but maybe Arizona, maybe Arizona, maybe, Arizona. maybe not. But I, I don't know if I, I don't know if Stanford wants to or not. I'm not sure, but I think you should absolutely look at Colorado and Washington. As potential, and by the way, Nebraska would love absolutely love their traditional rivals with Colorado. Nebraska would absolutely love to have Colorado so that they could have an old Big 12 rival back in their circle. Nebraska, who, by the way, has been saber rattling much like Penn State was during the last cycle. And I don't think Nebraska leaves. Don't get me wrong. But like if you put a gun to my head and say pick a Big 10 team that might leave, I would say Nebraska. But that being said, I don't think they're leaving. But still, you yeah. bring in Colorado, and much like what uh, Nomad said in regards to Penn State, it does help make Nebraska feel a bit more at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, Gangland. Gangland goes, okay, but where would Nebraska go? <laughs> great question. They're not exactly, mm -hmm. they're not leaving. Yeah. So, so I, Kyle, I think for the sake of the argument, I'm going to grab Colorado and Washington, and I'm also going to slide them into the Big Ten. And again, it could be Utah. It could be Arizona. It could be Stanford. But for right now, I'm going to slide Washington and Colorado into the Big Ten. This gives us our first mega conference of 20 teams. So, Kyle, now the question becomes, the Big Ten now is at 20 teams. What do those other teams do in response? What do, excuse me, what do the other conferences do in response? The Pac-12 is kind of dead at this point. They're down to six teams. The SEC is like, well, the Big Ten has 20 teams. Are we supposed to sit here with our 16 teams? Uh, ACC, we've given uh, Notre Dame. Um, and for the sake of maybe giving them an even number for now, I kind of want to go ahead and do what I think is the most logical thing that could happen and maybe slide Cincinnati over into there. The ACC takes UCLA. I, I don't, I don't see that. Um, if, if for first and foremost, I think the California stick together. UCLA and Cal are going to stick together. And on top of that, you want to talk about a, a place that the Big Ten academics, very serious. K the University of California academics, very serious. They're not about to join the ACC with the likes of some of the schools they have in the ACC. Yeah, no, absolutely. So so you really think Cincinnati? I do. Hmm. I, I actually really do. Now, maybe it's UCF. Maybe it's Memphis. It might also be those teams. So, so Kyle, I don't, I don't want to, I think Temple 
ACC and uh, uh, Sun Card says uh, the ACC has a ton of private schools. Yes, they do. They do. Um, Absolutely. So, Kyle, I, I put Cincinnati in there. I think that's a very, very real possibility. But I could put Memphis in there if you prefer. I don't want to I don't want to dominate this. I could put UCF in there if you prefer. That's another I'll tell you one team. team. I'll tell you one team if you're going from the AAC that will not come over. Wichita is that purple State. team right there. Is that purple team ECU? I don't think I don't think ECU no. would come over. No, they're, they're they're not. They're not Mm-mm. they're not at that level. Wichita State's not at that level. Um there, there's a, uh, I, could SMU. Yeah, I could definitely see um I can definitely see um UCF come over or um I think yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I would I would think UCF could come over too. Yeah. But what I really want to look at now, Kyle, we have a decimated Big 12 and we have a decimated Pac 12. What happens with those teams? I think I think it, it's gonna kind of it would kind of be like what happened the first time around. Or not first time, but the most recent one where whatever was left, they kind of joined forces and put them all together. I, I really think that's what's going to happen. And then those leftover teams from we haven't even finished the Big Twelve because I, I think the Big Twelve are there, left in the Big Twelve here. Are there it's additional be, teams? Who who if the Big Twelve? So we're, we're talking about three mega conferences. This is this is what I'm. Everyone, oh four mega conferences. Four me, uh uh-uh, three. ACC, SEC, Big Ten. So I think what I want to ask you right now, Kyle, is if you look at the Big 12, if you look at the Pac-12, of those teams, and by the way, I think the Big Ten is full at this point. They're at 20 teams. I'm keeping them at 20 teams. Could it be more? Could you also see Stanford and Utah? Maybe, but right now I'm keeping it at 20 teams. So Kyle, Uh, We have West Virginia, Texas Tech, Baylor, Oklahoma State, TCU, Iowa State, um, Kansas, and Kansas State. Do you see any of those teams potentially joining the ACC or the SEC if we're trying to get those teams up to maybe 20 teams or 20 uh, conferences up to possibly maybe West Virginia going over to the ACC? I think that is a certain possibility. Um, it it would I, be, I think I think if the ACC really is nice. trying to find I think if the ACC is trying to find twenty teams, like hey, all right, what's left? What what other teams can we we can put in there? I think West Virginia kind of makes sense to put them in there. It would make it would make Pitt. It would make you're you're kind of bringing one of the last Big East pieces. Like the old be- the old dead Big East, it would make Pitt very happy. It would make my Miami- I don't know I don't know if Miami cares, but it yeah. would make Virginia yeah. Tech very happy. Uh, yeah, and, but no but mad, that's the problem. No mad, it it doesn't matter. I mean, look at look at some of the other schools that's in the ACC too. Well, it does it does matter. It just doesn't all encompassingly matter. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. West Virginia academics are bad. Their research is non-existent. Uh, they don't bring a big alumni base. They don't bring a large population base, either from a recruiting or television. The entire state of West Virginia has only 1.7 million people in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are cities and especially media markets considerably bigger than the entire state of West Virginia. Uh, but I, I think West Virginia to the ACC is very possible, especially, like I said, if you're really trying to get them to 20. Yeah. All right. I, I think I think this is a good stopping point right uh, now, Jared. Oh, yeah. Wow. We need to do a we need to do an ad break. By the way, Nomad, uh, I, there was talk about the ACC and academics. Pitt is an excellent academic school. Georgia Tech, one of the top academic schools in the country. Um, and I'm again, I'm not saying that it's from top to bottom as good as the Big Ten or the Pac-12, but no, uh, Wake Forest, excellent. North Carolina, one of the best in the country. NC State is a very good academic school. Notre Dame's one of the top schools in the country. Virginia is one of the top schools in the country. Florida State's not bad. 
You know what I mean? Um, Clemson is not bad. This is not this is not the SEC or the the Big Twelve. If you're looking at a t- if you're looking at a conference and being like, "Ha your academics suck," that is not the ACC. They have very very solid academics. It's not as top to bottom strong as the Big Ten, but it's very very strong. All right, Kyle, ad reads. Yes, go ahead, go ahead and start us off with our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee. I'm going to take advantage of our new screen situation here and put it up full screen. Oh, my goodness. We, we're going full screen with the Iron Bean Coffee Company right now. Let's look at some of these flavored coffees. Kyle, I think I got to get... I got to get some flavored. I haven't got much of their flavored coffees to this point, and I need to fix that. I think my next go, I might have to get some of the intense blueberry. Uh, the Irish cream and the grog. I, I love a good grog. I'm going to have to try that out. Got the Irish cream. Hell yeah. We're going to give that a shot. I love blueberry. Um, I know Gangland told me. Uh, yeah, Gangland just now uh, telling me again um, that the. Uh, he's get, he's got a carrot cake and a blueberry on the way, and he'll he'll report back to me on how those are going. Um, the intense blueberry, you can get it in a grind or a whole bean. Um, I remember my first experience. I love by the way, I don't know who writes these things on the Iron Bean Coffee site, but I love them. Uh, I was at a mobile gas station, fancy coffee display on Wolf Road in Albany, New York. I was late for work. I had no coffee. And an hour ride ahead of me. The only coffee ready was blueberry. I begrudgingly poured a cup and an equal pack and a dash of milk and hit the road. I freaking loved it. And I had search for blueberry anytime I could thereafter. Well, now my search is over. Uh, They're making their own. And by the way, when you're looking at the flavored coffees, do not sleep on the unicorn. What is it? Who the hell knows what kind of coffee it is? This is straight from the research and the uh right from the R&D department. I forgot what D stood for. It's fine. We're moving on. What was it? Was it carrot cake? Was it peppermint? Was it a chocolate brownie, ginger snap, blueberry cinnamon? Who the hell knows? Point is, it's development, by the way. Who the hell knows? That's part of the fun of it. If you're the adventurous type, if you're the brave type, I highly recommend checking out the unicorn. Uh, I got it once and I'm pretty sure it was this blueberry cinnamon right here, or maybe uh, over on the murder brand, they have like a blueberry crumble. It also could have been that. So the one time I got the unicorn for myself, it was uh, it was like a blueberry cinnamon, blueberry crumble sort of thing. So the point is, is that it's an adventure. Um, all Iron Bean coffees come with a subscribe and save service. All come in either whole bean or drip grind. Uh, you can find your favorite coffee, including a whole bunch of non-flavored coffees. Uh, this and so, so, so much more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is I'd also brought up, to you by our good... I'd also pull up Mad Canadian, but his he doesn't have a site up right now. <laughs> This side is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, as Jared said, their, their site is currently down, but once it's back up, be sure to take advantage of all the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Uh, mentioned some of the great seasonings in the top of the show. Um, let's go over some of the um, packages that they have. I think, I can't remember exactly what he calls them, but the, the package deals that they have. So they have the the whole hog, which is one of the, each of the great seasonings that the Mac Canadian has over at his website. I think they're up to 14 more on the way. Um, you have the sweet heat, um, probably my favorite of the, the other two here. It It's their, um, their chicken wing set, as I like to call it. Four horsemen, discord, your two really spicy ones, the two border, and the old fashioned you can't go wrong with those if you're having a good chicken if you're grilling some chicken wings or deep frying or air frying whatever whatever you want to do um and then there's the just send it's their most versatile seasoning the the s and pepa their salt and pepper um blend mix the sonoran heat the cajun and the smoked can't go wrong with those seasonings as your as your good starter seasoning packet package um, be sure to check out those and much, much more once the site is up. 
over at themagnetonbbq.com and use that promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mackinney Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. All right, Kyle, let's get back into this. Um, let's see, Kyle, how do you feel about more teams in the SEC? Um, yeah, definitely, I- definitely more teams into the SEC, I would think so. And I think, I think they would really try to take advantage of the whole, um, since they have Texas A&M, they have Texas, why not raid more of those Texas teams there? Try to try to take take it all, take that whole state for themselves. So are we thinking Texas Tech, Texas Christian, Baylor? We got we got three to pick from there. And then by the way, we also have uh Houston and SMU. I'm kidding, of course. That they, they would they would be absolutely murdered. I mean, the t- the two that really screams out to me is Baylor and TCU. Those are the first two that scream out to me. I don't know about yeah. you. What do you think? I, I think I think TCU is very interesting. And I really don't know if it happens. I really don't know if the SEC moves past 16 teams, or at least if I don't know if they move past, past 16 teams in this cycle. Um, in these next, say, two and a half years. But I, I think we're we're just playing here, right? We're just playing here. So I'm going to, not only are we going to add an additional Texas team, how do you feel about adding an additional Oklahoma team and bringing Oklahoma State over? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I just don't really see... I really don't know about Oklahoma state. I, I really don't. I mean, the team that really sticks out to me, I know football teams are atrocious, but man, you got a blue blood, blue blood basketball team right there for the pickings too. I know, I know, I know it's, it's about football. It's about football, but man, that fan base and the blue blood that is Kansas coming over to a conference too is very intriguing. I tell you what, Kyle, you convinced me. Now, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to say this again. I've said it before. Basketball doesn't matter. I'm sorry. Like before I said football doesn't matter, but basketball extra doesn't matter in all of these conference realignment talks. I'm sorry. I I don't take joy in saying that. But if we're really talking about the money involved here, basketball does not matter. But it is Kentucky. Excuse me, Kansas. It is Kansas. It's it's like Duke. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Um, I think it's intriguing. I, I don't know if it happens, but I think it's intriguing. And like, hey, it would be real fun from a basketball standpoint to have Kansas and Kentucky in the same conference. Um, I, I I I say let's go for it. I, I don't nec- I don't have a problem with it. That does put us at eight team, 18 teams currently um, in the SEC. Who else did you add other than Kansas? TCU. TCU. All right, Kyle. So how about this? Let's move to the ACC for a second. I really I don't see Baylor. Baylor was good for a minute and Baylor was only good for a minute because they were. I'm just going to go ahead and say this and I'm going to say it bluntly, openly bringing rapists onto the teams from onto that team from other schools. Uh, There's a reason why literally everyone involved with the football program, including the athletic director, was completely canned and blackballed from sports since there since then. The only reason they it's like SMU. Everyone's like, oh, poor SMU. They sucked before they cheated. Now that they are not openly paying players anymore, they suck again. I don't care. Um, they covered up some horrible shit there and like actively pursued it and allowed it and made it happen. Um, I'm gonna Kyle, how do you feel about Tulsa, Memphis, UCF? To the ACC. 
I'm good with that. I, I really think when it all comes down to it, I think that Big Ten will will go after the Pac-12. The SEC will go after the Big 12. And the ACC will go after the AAC then. Hmm. Plus, plus Nomad Notre Dame. is saying... Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting kicked back on Tulsa. I'm getting kicked back on Tulsa. So let's, let's move Tulsa back out. Let's put Memphis and UCF in there. I think Memphis and UCF are definitely no brainers as do. I think Cincinnati is a no brainer. Uh, do you guys prefer Temple or Houston Navy? Mm. I, I, I do not think so. Navy's a lot I of don't fun, think but Navy, no, not Navy. We got we got one vote Houston, we got one vote Navy. Um let's let's go ahead and well, they, they need a Texas team. Do they need a Texas team? I don't know. That's feels far outside of their footprint. Um Temple. Temple. I was say, yeah, Temple and mm. I'm gonna say Temple. I don't, I mean, you got Memphis. You got Memphis on the far side of Hughes, of um, Tennessee there. Uh. Yeah, but it, when the grand scheme of things, if you, especially if you're moving to get Cincinnati and Notre Dame, it's like upper Midwest bit there. Like ACC is sort of moving into that territory. Yeah, I I probably would say Temple over Houston. I, I would agree with Nomad. I would say Temple. It it is. Houston would be pretty far away from anyone else that they have. So yeah, let's go, let's go temple over Houston. Although I'm not super confident about that. Mm -hmm. So the additions we have so far for the ACC, Notre Dame, Cincinnati, West Virginia, UCF, Memphis, and temple. Yeah. Okay. So So that would bring, that would bring ACC and the big 10 with, 20 teams. Make sure I'm doing my math right. Yep, 20 teams. And then the SEC would have 18. That is correct. And I I seriously think that the SEC would match what the ACC and the Big Ten would do then. So I I think the SEC would find find two more teams and and heck, who but who I are mean, those teams? I mean, Al- maybe you could maybe maybe you could finish that off and say, "Hey, hey, hey, Kansas, we'll get your state team. Hey, Oklahoma, we'll get your state team. Bring them over too. So bring in Kansas State and Oklahoma State as well." Oh man, Kansas State though, that that team would get. I mean, not that Kentucky doesn't and Kansas wouldn't. Man, they'd get slaughtered hard. So would yeah, so would Kansas, so would TCU. Yeah, but you bring in Kansas in for the basketball. Let's let's just be honest about that. Is there anyone in the Pac-12 that the S? I mean, that's far far outside of their footprint to maybe, maybe go all the way out to Arizona. Yeah, I was going to say probably the Arizonas there. That's that's super far outside of their footprint to to pull in the Arizonas. So here's what I'm thinking. I don't know if it's going to be called the the Pac-12 or not. But I'm just going to, for the sake of it, I'm going to, just going to include the, I'm just going to make it the Pac-12. But I, I see if we look at the remnants of the American Conference, the remnants of the Big 12, the remnants of the Pac-12, some other teams yep. that are out there right now, including, say, BYU and Boise, who are interesting teams, I think we can start to piece together and I'm going to make it the pack 12, even though I'm not sure if it will actually be called that or not. Yeah. I think no, I, start I, to I piece agree with you, Nomad. I agree that? with you, Nomad. I know Jared is all up in about three conferences, but I really think that there will be a fourth conference and that's just going to be whoever's left. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's exactly what I was, I was just saying. Um, I, I think, and again, I maybe I, I'm going to make it the Pac-12. I don't know if it'll be the Pac-12 or not, but just because that's that's just the box I'm going to put it in for right now. Maybe you move Boise into there. Maybe you move BYU into there. You move Iowa State into there. You move Oklahoma State into there. 
maybe Texas Tech, SMU, Houston. Whoops. Tulsa. I mean, it's just a clusterfuck of teams that you're just trying to get and put something together here to maintain something. So, and again, I'm not saying that this, this conference is actually going to be called the PAC 12 or that the PAC 12 or the big 12 or the American still exist after all of this mess. But I do think that there's enough pieces left over to form a fourth conference. And this fourth conference is not going to be on the same level as the ACC, the big 12, or excuse me, the ACC, the big 10 and the SEC. But we're looking at central Florida, Iowa state, Utah, uh, I, Stan, I don't, I just don't see Stanford into in, in, in this. <laughs> I have a, I would see actually maybe Stanford move independent. Um, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe we move Kansas State into it. Um, so we're looking at South, or excuse, uh, yeah, South Florida, Iowa State, Utah, Kansas State, Baylor, Oklahoma State, Washington State, Arizona State, Arizona, Oregon State, Texas Tech, Tulsa, Houston, SMU, BYU, Boise. That's a fun conference. I'm not saying it's a great conference. I'm not saying it's a conference that's going to exist and function at the same level as the other three conferences, but that's a fun conference and I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch this conference. And again, maybe this is some other... conference that isn't anything right now it's just something else and it might be a football only conference and it might be it'll, this and it it'll, might it'll be, be called that. it'll be called the big west <laughs> yeah i mean kind of that's basically what it would be it would i'd call it like the i was about to call it the frontier league but i think that's already a thing The Scrub Athletic Conference, uh, the Second Tier Athletic Conference, the Big POS. <laughs> y'all are y'all are rude. Uh, Stuart wants to ask where the what about the Rainbow Warriors? I feel like the Mountain West is still a thing. At the end of this, I know the Mountain West loses Boise, but I think that's all I stole from them. The Mountain West is still a thing. The Sun Belt is still a thing. The American might. Like you might have if this if this other the big POS here, if this other thing exists, then the American might go get the best Sunbelt teams and the best Mountain West teams and the best Mac teams um, and the best Conference USA teams and, and form a really good like you, you basically take all of the best group of five teams left over again. Tulsa, Eastern Carolina, Appy State, Hawaii, why not? Uh, you, you get all of those best teams that are left over and you, you shove them into one conference. I'd be here for it. Even if, and by the way, it would probably be a football only conference because these, these schools don't have the budgets to be traveling all over the country for volleyball and whatever else. It would probably be a football only conference. Yeah. But I, I think it would be real interesting if at the end of this, you have the American Conference, who we've completely rated. Like, if you look at the graphic right now, we have Tulsa, Navy, Wichita State, and ECU left in the American. Like I said, they go out and maybe they grab Army and they grab Appy State and maybe they grab Ohio and maybe they grab, I don't know, so, I'm blanking on on a bunch of those other schools, but just like what other schools are out there? Um, Alabama, Birmingham, um, just some of those other good Sun Belt schools, good Mac schools, good Mountain West schools and form what could be a real fun conference for those of us who are complete nerds about these things. Uh, I, I think 
Gangland says we're calling that one the Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> and Nomad seems excited. He drops up a card, make it so in there. Kyle, let's hit up some of these Ask Sloopcast questions, especially if they're pertaining. I know we are over on time and we have a million of them. If they're pertaining to conference realignment, let's go ahead and ask them. All right, let me look here. Uh, Stuart asks, could we possibly drop current schools from the Big Ten and add schools who will increase our thumbprint across America? I think that's exactly what's happening. I think the Big Ten is about to go west. I think there's a Big Ten super west, a Big Ten Pacific. I think it's happening. Mm -hmm. And I and also saw there's a bunch of things. I know that the, the SEC current proposal is having like a four-team pod um, you could possibly even see the Big Ten do something like that. Maybe they make a a, a three team um, sub conference, or even a four team or a, a four pod um, sub conference too, and then everybody in the West would be in that then too. Yeah, uh, you you beat Nomad to it. By the way, are there <laughs> rules against conferences having playoffs? Because like if you have a twenty team and by, that's, we have the ACC at 20 we have the Big Ten at 20 we have the SEC at 18 right now so th then the problem could with you that have then... a four team a four division playoff with four team a four division conference with four with a four team playoff at the end of it then the problem it's going to be here is number of games we're playing then number of games that these these kids are playing because if you're already going to expand the playoffs to a 12 team playoff uh -huh. and then you're going to ask as well as, Oh, Hey, they have to play two more games just to determine who's going to be the conference champion. I mean, they're going to be at the end, they're going to be playing more than NFL teams who don't make the, the playoffs. Here, here, here's my argument to that, Kyle. If you have these mega conferences, that's going to increase your TV money, something insane, because now there's less leagues to to bid. So therefore, you're you're one of three major conferences instead of one of five or six major conferences, which makes your conference all that much more valuable, which makes you which puts you in an amazing position to negotiate television contracts. And by the way, the ACC, the Big Ten, the SEC all partially own their own television networks. They're printing money. And if they're printing money, and if you can actually just win your way into the playoffs now, do you need all of those games against Tulsa and Buffalo? Maybe we start to see some of those games go away. You see a nine-game Big Ten schedule with only one or two out of conference games. And those two games would probably be, by the way, you only have three conferences now. You know what you can do? You can put together conference to conference challenges. This is going to bring a whole lot more co uh, inter conference cooperation. And I don't know how much you still need warm up games against the Mac. Yeah. And if so you're going to go down that, if you're gonna go down that route, then if you're going to go down that route, then you're you're going to have to split up Division One FBS. Then it's going to have to be land. the division. SEC will come north, but they'll do it in September. They're you're, not coming north otherwise. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to split up like these these super conferences as their own their own um, like division. Mm -hmm. One star FBS, and then the rest of the the Mac, the Sun Belt, and all that would be their own. They would they would play be their own. Then that's a thing that's coming. I'm just saying that's a thing that's coming. They're by the there. It's not. We're not too far. This is the first three mega conferences. This is the first step towards these conferences splitting away from the NCAA entirely. Oh, by the way, with Gangland and Nomad chiming in here, they're afraid of Sherman still around. Oh, yeah. Sherman already invaded Atlanta this weekend already. Look at Kyle's hat. 
404 score not found. All right. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, next question. All right. Uh, next question here. Um, I think we already kind of answered this, but um, I'll, I'll bring this up again. Caputo asks if the USC, if USC joins the Big Ten, would it further increase Ohio State's recent recruiting success in California? Yes. This is about, like I was saying before about Ohio State sort of and the other Big Ten schools becoming more prominent players in that upper Atlantic region for recruiting. Yes, the Big Ten mm -hmm. and Ohio State by proxy are, are now going to become, again, this is not just about getting the best teams. This is not just about getting the best universities. This is not just about getting TV markets. This is also about acquiring recruiting territory. California is the most populous state in the country by a lot. Yeah. Uh, another question here. I think this is probably the big question that I I'd like to know the answer to this, Jared. Buckeye Zach asks, how soon do you believe the Big Ten will begin the expansion process for new schools slash programs? We'll begin the process? It's begun. They they reformed the committee earlier this year, like way earlier this year. They're actively talking to teams right now. They're actively talking to teams right now. And by the way, for the record, Gene Smith's running shit, not Kevin Warren. He, he, let, let me ever like Kevin Warren sucks, right? We, we, we're all on the Kevin Warren sucks. Well, get this. Here's the good thing about Kevin Warren sucking. By the way, I don't think we I don't think we need to have the graphic up any longer. Let me just do this. So let's get our slip cast back in visual again. Here's the good thing about Kevin Warren sucking. He's a weak conference commissioner, which means he can't pull his weight around because he's already on thin ice. He knows he's on thin ice. And this gives Gene Smith power. You have a weak conference commissioner. So that creates a power vacuum. That power vacuum will be filled by the athletic director of the most powerful member of the conference, who is Gene Smith. So does Kevin Warren suck? Yes. But there's opportunity in that. There's opportunity in Kevin Warren sucking. And I believe Gene Smith is taking advantage of said opportunity. And I know that there are big or that there are Ohio State fans out there who are mad or dislike Gene Smith. And I'm not saying he's been perfect, but I am saying that he's maybe the best athletic director in the country. And I don't want anyone else leading Ohio State. You have any more questions? Uh, Austin Formation, are regional conferences as we know them finished? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's SEC see is just the South now. Big Ten is just the North now, but they're also maybe going to be the West now. Um, yeah. The ACC is basically the Far East. Um, yeah, it's, it's a mess. Yep. Uh, Nomad. Is Jim Thorpe the greatest U.S. Olympian ever? Uh, he's certainly in the conversation. If we're putting together a Mount Olympus, Mount Olympus, a Mount Rushmore of it, then he's it's like him, Jesse Owens. You have to put Michael Phelps on there. Yep. Um, I yeah, I, I think he's he's if he's not the best of all time and he might be. But if he's not the best of all time, he's on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, nope, absolutely too. Um also have to add in there um Usain Bolt too for what he's done. Well, he, said, Carl he's, Lewis. he said Carl he said Lewis American. put on there too. He said American. Olympian. Oh, American. Oh. All right, my bad. Well, well yeah, Carl Lewis. <laughs> Carl Lewis, yes. <laughs> uh all right. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? I'm wanting to grab at least one from everybody. So if I didn't add one. I apologize. Did I do one from Stuart? Did I do one from? Just ask it. If you Stuart? got a good one, ask it. Uh, no, I did. I did. It was about the dropping current school from the Big Ten. All right. I think that's oh, at least one from didn't. everybody. But yeah. By the way, no. No one's leaving the Big Ten. 
Yeah. No one's leaving the SEC. No one's leaving the ACC. Oh, there's lots more. You you guys gave us a bunch of questions and we talked for a long time. Kyle. Should we continue to be mad at Michael Drake for giving us Kevin Warren? Yes. I don't think it was Michael Drake. I don't know if it was Michael Drake's fault. Uh, by the way, we had Big Ten media days. We didn't talk about it at all. Um, Gene Smith said publicly to a reporter. But if you don't know, Gene Smith was on the committee that was advising the next president or excuse me, the next commissioner of the Big Ten. The list that they provided. Kevin Warren was not on it. Gene Smith said this publicly. That is, he went he, it, unprovoked. That is a shot across the ballot, Kevin Warren. That's Gene Smith saying publicly to Kevin Warren, I'm not afraid of you, and I will take you down. He's not playing nice. He's airing dirty laundry, and he's doing so of his own choice. All right, Jared, I, th I think we'll stop it there. I know we could go on. We could keep going on here, but we are over the hour mark here. So let's go ahead and end today's episode. Uh, Stuart, the thing you just asked about a additional Sloop Cat only episode or uh, question only episode. Um, if if we get to our goal and start doing five episodes a week during the football season, I think that one of those episodes might be like an exclusive Ask Sloopcast episode. And even if we don't reach that goal, uh, we still might do that, but we'll only release it on the Patreon. There might be Patreon only content coming. And so you do need more money then. Yes, we, we do need more money. Uh, we, we have a goal on our Patreon that if we reach it, we will do five episodes a week during the football season. That's a thing. Um, we're not at it yet. Length? You want length of the episodes? They would be slightly shorter. I'm, they, they, they would be slightly shorter if we started doing five episodes a week. I'm letting you know that right now. They would be slightly shorter. <laughs> All right, Kyle, we have to end this episode. <laughs> Nomad says, I don't believe you. Uh, yeah, okay, Kyle, we're ending the episode. We're ending the episode. We got we got to end the episode now. Uh, just so everyone, everyone check out the sloopcast.com to find all of our links to all of our things. Please be sure. Oh, don't want to forget this. Sun Card is doing another trivia night. Trivia night. Uh, we're doing another Sloopcast trivia night. If you want details on that, join the Discord. The Discord is free. There are premium channels on the Discord, but the majority of it is free. Discord.thesloopcast.com. That's it. Just go to discord.thesloopcast.com. It's just an app on your phone. It's just a website. It's basically private social media that's moderated by Kyle and I. And also Suncard and Stuart and Nomad. They're, they're also mods. But it's completely free. It's If you don't know what it is, it's basically private social media that's closely moderated and not open to the general public. So discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, also, patreon.thesloopcast.com is where you can, can give us money, please, if you want us to start doing five episodes a week. I'm just saying we, we put a lot of time and effort into this and we make some but not enough money. So if you want to help us out, that would be appreciated. Uh, Patreon.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, you can buy t-shirts. I'm actually wearing, uh, this is from our 7071 store. It's 7071.thesloopcast.com. We also have Sloopcast specific merch at merch.thesloopcast.com. And that's that's all that I feel like doing. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, two quick things. Cleveland Indians, no longer. Cleveland Guardians. Do you like the name? Yeah, uh, I think it's cool. You have... Um, you have the 
DNs. You go from in DNs to guard DNs. So that's a cool transition. Uh, so they can they can still do they can still their, do their W like their when they win, win so many the more Windians. they go Windians. Yeah, they can still do that. They're still the Windians. Um, I it the, it's named after those those big Art Deco guardians that are on the Hope Memorial Bridge that's just outside of Progressive Field. Um, I'm an Art Deco nerd, so I I I think they're cool. Um, but so that's it is like a city specific thing. You're keeping the Dians. I'm not a fan of the logo, the the fl- the baseball logo with the G and the win. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I don't know what it is with Ohio teams and completely screwing up logos lately. Um, <laughs> for the Cleveland Washington football team, <laughs> the Cleveland Washington football team. You, um, put, you put you put old George on the side of the side of the helmet. It's a baseball team on the front of the hat. Sure, you put old George on there. It still makes sense. Right. Why not put why not put Rocket in the front of it? Rocket uh, from Guardians. <laughs> well, as they had Tom Hanks do the intro video for it, and I'm like, Chris Pratt was right there. Yeah. You could have used Chris Pratt. Would have made more sense. But I do appreciate mm. them using the black keys as the soundtrack to that video. And for those of you who only listen to us on the YouTube version of the show, uh, we use a black key song to intro the podcast. So yep. and last thing here, the crew. The Columbus crew are unbeaten in the last six matches. They have not lost in the past six games here, and they moved up from eighth place in the conference to fourth. Crew is moving up. They are getting healthy. They're getting players back. I know they're not scoring a lot of goals, but you know what? Room is a wall. Room is a wall there. Yeah. And is I think it's the crew is this is the second best team of letting up goals and you got room to thank for that by the way Stuart, that's that i'm sorry to break this to you that's factually inaccurate they're they're not the indians because they had the first native american perfect that's that's a justification they made up years after the fact i i'm I'm sorry to break that to you that's that's simply not true that's all right that that that's all I have the time. We gotta I gotta try to end this here, Jared, because Carmen's crew is playing here in a few minutes. Yes, Carmen's crew. We we we, we didn't talk a lot about Carmen's crew because we don't know what's it's going happening. to happen in this game. But we're gonna go watch it, and I uh, hope everyone else is enjoying it. Um. So with all of that, nope, didn't do the music. I, I was a little bit far ahead of myself. Almost. I almost got there. Kyle, we're doing a song by Low Pan which is a metal band here from the Columbus area. Kyle, the name of the song is Go West. If you think that's not a coded reference to something, you are mistaken. The Big Ten is going west. So, yeah, we're doing low pan, go west as our uh, as our ending music for tonight. Uh, so with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is low pan. You know what, Jared? Hi, hi, YouTube. All right, go ahead. I can't believe I forgot two more names. We were talking about best U.S. Olympians. Okay. I cannot okay. believe I forgot these two because they were right down my alley. Edwin Moses. Yeah, one I of you're going to say. I one of you're gonna say it. the yeah. best hurdlers ever in U.S. history. And of course, us growing up as kids, who was the man wearing the golden cleats? Uh, Michael Johnson. Yes, Michael Johnson. You got, you got. Yep, you can't forget about Spitz too. Yeah, absolutely, Spitz as well. Oh, we said Jesse Owens. Yeah, we we definitely said Jesse Owens there. And Phelps. Yep. Man, uh, I can't believe I forgot those two. You're naming naming them all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you get. It's not like you prepared for the question. It's. I know people who don't know maybe, podcasts don't know how hard it is to simultaneously know, knowing a lot of the yeah. athletes in track and field. Yeah, man, I feel bad. I feel bad. I know. I know. I have a brother who's probably going to shake his head when he hears this. <laughs> you so. you corrected it. You corrected it. unless he only listens to the audio <laughs> version, in which case he's not hearing any of this part. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and end the episode, Jared. Once again, I would like to thank 
uh, Lopan, which is, by the way, spelled L-O-P-A-N. Uh, Lopan for ending today's episode. And I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. Kyle, uh, I talked some about their flavored coffees. So let's let's go to their standard coffees. And let me actually go ahead and pull the screen back up. All right. Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, let's see. What are we gonna, let's look at the ride or die. Ride, by the way, I've never shown the website. I'm, I just need to talk about this for a second. We never showed the website on the podcast before. Just look at the bag art. I don't know who does their stuff. Like, artistically, this coffee company is amazing. Between the write-ups on the website, the bag art, the design of the website, um, their mugs. If you ever looked at all of the mugs that they've sold over the years, I, they're amazing. I, I don't know who does all of their art. It's all just tremendous. Uh, I like this one, too. This is the cast iron. Um Veteran owned from farm to cup, originally roasted by hand in a cast iron skillet, just like all of our coffee. This one really stood out and still does. Uh, let's see. We have semi-sweet chocolate uh, smoke note balanced with a hint of floral um, Honduran sweet balanced clean coffee with spice note and a slight black pepper and a little bit of caramel in the lighter roast. Let's... Uh... Let's go ahead. I said we're going to do the ride or die. Let's look at the ride or die. Uh, ride or die is originally a biker term, meaning if you couldn't ride, you'd rather die. It's changed in meaning um, that you will ride, uh, that you will ride any problems out with them or die trying. The ride doesn't always have to be a negative either. Obviously, if you're this close with someone, you want to enjoy the ride with them. Uh, fair trade, certified, USDA, organic. It's it, guys. It's all the stuff. And like anything else, it's available whole bean or ground. Uh, the ride or die does come in a collection of sizes as well. And of course, you can always subscribe or save. You can't go wrong with the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, explore the website by yourself. Check out all of these other great coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Now, Jared and I met up just a week ago, and the one seasoning that we put on the most of our homemade food was the two border. Yes, we did. Two border on two border on everything. Two border on eggs. Two border on our bacon. Two border on our ribs. The two border, Jared. Tell us a little bit of why you decided to put the two border on. Kyle. Uh well for one, uh Matt Canadian says he puts it on all of his ribs. So when I went to make ribs, who was I to disagree? Mm -hmm. Am I right? I mean, who was I to disagree? I mean and on I mean, the breakfast, it's because it's maple and it's spicy and like maple for breakfast just sort of feels right. And by the way, Kyle specifically asked me to put this on the on the podcast. I mean, it, com it comes from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company's um, employee of the year, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in case yeah. in case those don't know, that is Justin, who is the Mad Canadian himself. <laughs> All right. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> all right um check out check out the the two border and all the other great seasonings once the website is up over at the mad canadian bbq.com use that promo code sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10 percent off your entire order mad canadian barbecue company where they have your butt covered 